Welcome to St. Paul's Sunday School. I am so excited to share today's lesson with you. This is the story of Christmas and why we celebrate Christmas. I did send this um, link out early this week, so you might be watching this during the week this week, or you might be waiting and maybe you are watching it still on Sunday morning. Um, depending on when you're watching, I did want to remind you that we have several ways to worship on Christmas Eve. We have a 3 o'clock, a 4 o'clock, and a 5.30 um, service on the lot. And then we have a 7 o'clock and an 8.30 p.m. service in the sanctuary. Those sanctuary services, you must wear a mask and you must socially distance. Um, each, All those services are going to be about 30 minutes. Um, on Sunday mornings, we continue to have three ways to worship, our YouTube service, our 8 a.m. communion on the lot service, and our 930 sanctuary service. Um, some very exciting things happened at the church this past Saturday. A few members of our church gathered to build a hut, I guess you'd call it. Um, I have a picture sh showing you what the finished product look looks like. This will... Um, protect Pastor Tom as he's outside and he doesn't no longer has to stand in the back of a pickup truck for service on the lot. Um, and we decorated it and he actually will be able to have a small little heater near his feet to keep him a little bit warmer. And it also has a roof, as you can see, to protect him from the weather. So we're excited about being able to make the experience a little nicer for him and as well as everyone else. It just makes it look a little more festive. This week, we are going to be talking about gifts. Now, I'm sure with Christmas coming, you're thinking you're probably gonna get some gifts from family and friends or aunts and uncles. Um, but these are the kinds of gifts that you can't, those kinds of gifts that I'm talking about, you can't unwrap. They're not like the gifts that are under my Christmas tree here. You can't, that are all wrapped up, waiting for Christmas morning. These are the gifts you just can't unwrap. I wonder, can any of you think of ways you can give a gift with that's not wrapped? It might be saying kind words to someone. It might be that your teacher says, hey, we're not gonna have any homework tonight. Or your parent says, you can watch a little extra TV tonight or play video games for an extra 30 minutes today. Those, you can't wrap those things up, but they're still gifts to us. God gave us a very special gift that he could not wrap up. Do you have any idea what that gift was? That gift was baby Jesus. And just like the gifts, uh, the uh, gifts I mentioned, the kind words and um, extra time to watch TV and play video games can't be wrapped up. Baby Jesus couldn't be wrapped up either. That would be a little silly and not safe. But they're unexpected. Oftentimes when somebody says something nice to you, you're not expecting it. Or if you've just been a good boy or girl and you get to watch a little extra TV, you weren't expecting it. I know at my house, if someone says, can I watch extra TV or can I play video games longer? Usually I'm gonna say no. But if I see that they've just been good all day or did some extra chores or something like that, I might just out of the blue say, hey, you can watch some extra TV right before bed or you can play a few minutes extra of video games. That's their unexpected gifts just or surprise gifts, just like baby Jesus was an unexpected gift from God. Let's fold our hands and close our eyes. Dear God, you fill our world with unexpected gifts like friendship. We thank you for the people who make our world a better place. We are most thankful for the unexpected gift of baby Jesus born so long ago. Amen. Today's story is from the book of Luke in the New Testament. 
It is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. So it's not a real long one, but... um. And I think all of you, I would hope that all of you at some point read it out of the regular Bible um, because it is the story. And it's often the story that you hear at church or here in the parking lot if they read scripture. If you came to the carol sing on um, this past Sunday, they read it there. So in, in sections. So it's, it is a familiar story to you. So I'm not going to be reading from the regular Bible. And I'm not going to be reading from the Spark Story Bible. It is in the Spark Story Bible on page 212. It's called Jesus is Born. If you have a Spark Story Bible at home, you are welcome to read it from there. But this week, I am going to read from a storybook I have here at home. It's called On That Christmas Night. Mary lived in a little village in the hills. She was going to marry Joseph the carpenter. One day she had a surprise she never forgot. An angel appeared at her. At first Mary was very scared but the angel said, do not be afraid. I have good news. You're going to have a baby, God's son. You must call him Jesus. Then the angel left. So you can see this is the part of the story that we actually read about last Sunday. If you watched last week's Sunday School lesson where Mary and Joseph, Joseph were um, at different times um, got a message from an angel and both saw angels. Soon Mary knew she was going to have a baby. Just as the angel said, but Joseph and Mary had to go on a journey to the town of Bethlehem. It was a long way and they both grew very tired. At last, they saw lights in the town twinkling in the distance. They were nearly there. Finally, Mary and Joseph arrived in Bethlehem. It was very busy. Mary just wanted to find a bed. Joseph knocked at a door. The man came to the door. My house is full, he said. Then the man saw Mary's tired face. You can stay in my stable, he said, pointing to it. So they did. He pointed to the stable. Right now, there's a little boy in the stable. See how the man came to the door and said it was too full. And Mary and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem because there was something called the census. And they had to go and be counted. They had to go register and be counted. We still have census today where they count everybody. We actually just had one, I believe, this year. And we had to, we filled out papers or you could do it online. But back then they had to go to the town they were regis and register and be counted. And there in the stable in Bethlehem, baby Jesus was born. It was very peaceful. The cows and horses watched. The new baby, the newborn baby cried. Then he slept. How happy Mary was. I could rock the baby. In the fields nearby, shepherds were up all night minding their sheep. Suddenly, an angel appeared. Baby Jesus is born in Bethlehem, he said. Then a crowd of angels appeared singing at the top of their voices. So first an angel appeared to the shepherd and then a whole crowd of angels sang.
The shepherds left their sheep and rushed off to find baby Jesus. When they came to the stables, they knelt before him. Hopefully you can see that. And baby Jesus is actually laying right in here on the hay. It's kind of hard to see, but he's in there. And then there's one last section that says, far away, wise men saw a special new star. That star means a new king is born, said one. The wise men journeyed many miles to find baby Jesus, the newborn king. They brought him rich gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And this part right here, this last section I read, is actually next week's story. Well, we celebrate Christmas December 25th. It's just the start of the Christmas church season. It, the, church, the Christmas church season actually goes for a, more than just one day on December 25th. So we will hear the rest of the wise men's story next week. So I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope you were able to see the parts and look at the book a little bit as, as I read. Um, we do have the pamphlets still, even though we didn't read it from either of the books, but because it's the story of Jesus, we didn't need to read it directly from one of the Bibles and still are able to do um, the pamphlets. So this again, just retells the story like it does each week. This section here, you can talk about what your family does on Christmas. This year might be different, but you can talk about it. You can write a sentence or two about your favorite Christmas um, tradition. And those of you that are smaller that can't write, you could tell your mom, mommy or daddy, what to write there, what you like about Christmas and write it down there. And then there's a maze that you can follow and you have to spell out and find the way and it'll spell out a um, a message. And of course we have the big sticker that goes here and the verse stickers that go here. And on the back, it talks about what a manger is. A manger isn't actually a place for a baby. A manger is actually a feeding trough or a feeding bar for animals. And you can see the different feeding troughs there. And that's what Jesus was laid in after he was born. For my older older kiddos, you have the story that kind of makes it come to life today. You have this one, read the directions carefully and you actually start at the bottom and then this the, with the word bell. And then the next one you have to, it shows you two letters and then you have to use one of the other letters below and make a new word. And then you do the same thing, you use two more letters and you keep going up through. But if you read the directions carefully, you'll be able to do that. Um, then you always have the fun facts here. You can cut this out and make a little, um, it talked about the angels singing loudly and it, you know, we often sing Christmas carols at this time of year. So you, it says, can you think of a hymn? Do you think you can hymn sing? And it's two Christmas carols, joy to the world and silent night. If you cut this out and fold it the way it tells you to fold it, you have a little booklet, a little tiny booklet, and then you have the faith on the go on the back. So today we heard the story of Jesus's birth. It was an unexpected gift and it's a very exciting time. And it was very, very happy news. When a baby is born, it is very exciting. And I know that one of our friends who's actually newer, it's a newer friend to our church, actually just had a new baby, I believe last week. So congratulations to your family. And I want you to make sure that you continue to watch Sunday School each week so you can hear the rest of the Christmas story next week and then some other fun Bible stories in the weeks to come. Let's pray before we finish. Dear God, we're thankful that you brought us Jesus in such an unexpected way. We like that angels announced his birth. Help us see unexpected things as gifts. Amen. I hope all of you have a Merry Christmas 
and hopefully I'll see some of you um, come into the parking lot services or in the sanctuary service on Christmas Eve and I can wave from a distance and wish you a Merry Christmas in person. But other, if I don't get to see you, I hope that you all have a wonderful Christmas and a Happy New Year.